It is October the 14th, 2025. You are a senior and confused because support for Windows 10 has just ended. You have two choices, and today I want to discuss a Chromebook or an iPad. In this video, we'll discuss the pros and cons of both, and I'm going to suggest which one is best for you. There are three key things that you need to know and I'm going to discuss those in this video to help you make your purchase and get away from Windows. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we help seniors understand technology and help them navigate this difficult decision coming up in October of 2025. So my advice is to leave Windows behind. Choose one of these two choices. Unless, of course, you want to learn about a CPU a GPU, an NPU, if you want to learn about Intel, AMD, Snapdragon, emulation mode, Blackwell chips, NVIDIA chips, SSDs. Oh, we could go on and on and on as we do at Tech Free Senior, making a lot of videos. We also talk a lot about the Windows 11 problems with updates and all the failures that occur. In other words, you have to do three Hail Marys before you do an update because it may not install. Do you really want all this headache as you're turning the corner and have to make a decision? My advice is to watch this video and choose either a Chromebook or an iPad. And I'm gonna tell you which of those two you should choose. So in 2025, both the operating system on a Chromebook and an iPad are mature systems and a replacement for your Windows 10 machine. Don't be worried. You can do everything you need to do on both these machines. So let's have a look at the Chromebook first. I want to talk a little bit about the operating system. So this slide is an old slide that I've used in the many, many courses I teach on Chromebooks. And in this slide, you'll see three pictures. You're going to see uh, the big trucks uh, depicting the operating systems from Apple and Windows. Then you're going to see a little Mazda Miata down at the bottom. And it is, of course, representative of the Chrome operating system. Now, I want to ask you three questions. I want to ask you, uh, which of these vehicles goes the fastest? Which of these vehicles has the least horsepower? And which of these vehicles is the most fun to drive? So let's look at this. Of course, the Mazda Miata, it, it's going to go faster. It's going to go like stink. The Mazda Miata, of course, has not much horsepower. You got a lot of horsepower with those big trucks. And it's going to be the most fun to drive. That's because the Mazda Miata has a tiny little engine and is well designed. Those two great big trucks up there representing the Windows massive software operating system is, is because it's a legacy system. It's huge. It requires a lot of horsepower to run and a lot of space on your hard drive. And the same with the Apple operating system. So let's have a look at this tiny, tiny little operating system called Chrome OS. You know, it's so small that we put two copies on every Chromebook. Yeah, you get two. So there's a primary copy and a secondary copy. The primary copy is what you run on your Chromebook. And the secondary copy stays in the background. And you know what happens to it? Well, that's where all the updates occur. All the security features, all the updates, everything happens on that secondary copy. And when you go to bed at night and have a sleep, they secretly switch the copies on you. And when you start your computer up in the morning, instant, you wouldn't even know that it, it had a new version of the operating system on it. All happens behind the scene. No more Windows update in the middle of a program. No more failed updates. No more Windows hassle with updates and security features on your machine. It all happens secretly in the background. It's magic. We call it magic in our, in, our, in our course. We call it magic. 
So let's talk about security on a Chromebook. Chromebooks have never been hacked and never will be. Chromebooks, of course, were designed by Google through the US school system. In other words, they were made for kids and they had to be secure. The other issue is they're a modern operating system. In other words, they've only been around for about 10 years. So it has all the latest in security features, unlike the old legacy systems we had that, of course, require antivirus, malware protection, and it goes on and on and on. If you have a Windows machine, you'll understand all that. Well, in a Chromebook, there is no security software that you need. All the uh, security software is built into the operating system and kept up to date. So you don't need McAfee or any of those antiviruses. You don't need malware or anything like that on a Chromebook. It's all included for free in the operating system. I often get asked what, what other software comes with a Chromebook. Can, you, can we use other, other software? Well, your Chromebook actually comes with a whole suite of software. To give you some examples, it comes with, of course, Gmail. <laughs> Who doesn't use Gmail? It comes with Google Docs, document service, Google Sheets, and many more features, all included for free on your Chromebook. If you want to use Microsoft products, that's available as well on a Chromebook. Now, I often get asked about AI. Can you use AI on a Chromebook? Of course you can, and it's integrated as well into the software. And on my new Chromebook I just showed you, when I first started it up, it said, hey, Ron, how would you like Gemini Pro free for a year? I said, you got to be kidding. I was going to pay $340 for that. And they said, no, we'll give it to you for free. That's what I paid for my Chromebook. So I now have a whole year of Gemini Pro for free. And it was a promotional package on my Chromebook. <laughs> so yeah, it's great. It's free. I like free. So in our courses, we often get students coming in with their Chromebook. They sit down very nervously and they look at me and they say, well, how do we set this thing up? Oh, I said, well, just put your uh, Gmail username and password in. And they do that. And all of a sudden, instant, like it's just instant, the machine fires up and all their stuff is there. Everything that they have in their Google account is all online right there. Their eyes bug up and say, how did it do that? And I say, it's just magic. We call these magic machines. <laughs> so listen, I could go on all day long talking about the benefits of Chromebooks. And I've done a lot of videos about that. And I'll put some of the links in the description. Let me give you a few tips as we move on with this video. The first thing is I'd like you to set a budget of about three to $500 for a Chromebook. And the reason for this is, is there's a lot of cheap Chromebooks on, particularly on Amazon. Stay away from refurbished machines uh, or secondhand machines that you see. A lot of these are lease backs from the school systems and just, just aren't going to be a fun machine to use. So set a budget. I also have made a number of videos about purchase considerations for Chromebooks in 2023, 2024, and 2025. The links will be down below and you can have a look at that. But listen, all it, you need to know one important thing. Last year, uh, Google came out with a standard for Chromebooks and they're called Chromebook Pluses. And because there's so many different models and makes and models of Chromebooks that it can be confusing. So what they wanted to do is have a label that showed a minimum standard for what you would want. And that's called a Chromebook Plus. So if you see that, you will know that it has all the standards in there for speed, uh, memory, etc., to make that a great machine for you. So remember that Chromebook Plus. Look, look for that. So the next thing is uh, the size of the screen. Uh, I know a lot of seniors have trouble with their vision and you like a bigger screen. I would stick to around a 14 or 15 inch screen. There's a rarely some, there's a, a few, few models of Chromebooks that have bigger screens, but don't buy those. Those are so too big and they're clunky. You can plug any large monitor into a Chromebook. So I go big, get a 34 inch monitor, plug it in, and then you'll have no trouble with your vision. The other thing you should understand is that all Chromebooks come 
built in a casting feature. So it'll cast the image to your TV. So you can use your Chromebook and you can watch it on like a 90 inch screen. So you get a huge screen and it automatically will cast to most modern TVs now. And that's all built into a Chromebook. Now to give you some, some further help, um, because there are a lot of models out there, I'm going to recommend you to a website called Chrome Unboxed. They have a wealth of knowledge there. And Robbie Payne, who's their tester there, almost tests every darn Chromebook that's made. They have great videos on selection and all the features of all the new Chromebooks that are there. And I'll put the link here, but I would suggest if you want to do some more online research and you want to look, Chrome Unbox is a great place to go. And no, I don't work for them. They don't even know about me, but I always plug them because it's a great site and a good resource for you. So pop over there if you want to look at all the different makes and models. The next thing you should know is something I found, really sort of found out this last year in 2024. My Pixelbook, which is my favorite Chromebook built by Google many years ago, finally uh, needed replacing. And so I spent last year doing a huge amount of research trying to find the specific model that I wanted. And of course, where did I go? I went to Chrome Unboxed and followed all Robbie Payne's reviews. Well, none of those machines were available in Canada. In fact, Chromebooks are sold selectively into the US market. Hey, it originated from the schools and it's sold specifically into the US market. And even in Canada, the, the, the number of new models that come out in Canada is very limited. Now, my daughter, who is an international school teacher who has taught, now let me get this right, has taught in Japan, New Zealand, Singapore, eight years in China, and is now teaching in Africa, says, Dad, nobody has ever heard of a Chromebook in those areas. So you'll find once you get out of the United States, uh, Chromebooks work all over the world, but you're probably going to find a very limited selection. So just to let you know that don't be surprised if that's the case. Of course, what is not limited is this, is an iPad. No matter where you go in those countries and how far you go out into the rural areas, they all have iPads. iPads are universal around the world. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about all the features of iPads. Of course, you probably know that. But iPads have a great operating system. Now remember, they're made by Apple, unlike Chromebooks, which are made by all sorts of different companies. iPads are only made by Apple. And Apple has a strong history of security and great operating system. So there's nothing wrong with an iPad. It's a great machine. But just hold on. Don't go get. I want to give you the three most important things about this video that you need to know in making your selection for the between these two. So it's st hang in there for a few more minutes and we'll get to that point. So a Chromebook or an iPad? Both great machines, but which one should you choose? All right, let's decide how we're going to do this. And I want to come to point number one. First of all, it depends on what cell phone you have. If you have an iPhone, and let's face it, over 50% of the United States customers have iPhones as cell phones. In Canada, it's even a little more. So it's common. If you have an iPhone, you should buy an iPad. There's no question about that. The two just work great. Think of it like this. We have gravy and we have chocolate sauce. So chocolate sauce is great on ice cream. Gravy, not so much. Gravy goes on roast beef. So if we're looking at the iPhone, then you really want to get the iPad because the two complement each other. They work great together. Don't even consider a Chromebook phone. Let's go over to Android. And if you have a Pixel phone, then your selection should be no brainer. It should be a Chromebook. There's a special relationship between, well, it's Google, I guess. There's a special relationship between Pixel phones and Chromebooks. They work really well together. Now, of course, if you have another type of Android phone, such as maybe a Motorola or a Samsung, 
They work well with Chromebooks as well. It's the same operating system talking to each other. So I would go with a Chromebook in those situations, but for sure, if you have an iPhone, you go with an iPad. All right, let's look at the second point. So I wanna just let you know that Tech for Senior was founded by Huey and I uh, five years ago. We were concerned with um, seniors entering into COVID and we could see the writing on the wall with social isolation. And that's why we founded Tech for Senior. And today over 1 million people have watched our videos. So, but one of the founding principles we had at Tech for Senior was to prevent social isolation. So when you're looking at this and you're trying to make this decision between the two, my advice is to decide what your family is using. You want to stay connected with family and friends. Now, in my case, both my daughters and family all use iPhones. They have iPads, iPhones, everything Apple. They've never heard of Android. So you know what? That's why I have an iPad. We talk to them. One of them lives in Africa. The other lives in Australia. But we talk to them every day. You know, the kids call us. Everybody calls us. We use this as a communication tool to talk to our family. So my advice is that you search out your family, talk to them, and decide really what they're using for communication. They'll tell you. They're all using it. You may not be. But it's important that you make this decision and start using these devices because as seniors, our life changes and you may be moving into different type of environment. And if you have a device that has one button, you just push that button and you can talk to anyone all over the world for free. Yes, both Chromebook and iPad, you push one button and you can talk for free to anyone in the world as long as you want. It's so simple to do. So in your selection, figure out what the operating system of your family is and make that choice. Now, the third point is considering the other members of your family. If you're widowed and you only have one person to look after, then you don't have an issue. But if there is a spouse involved, then you need to consider what their needs are with their machine. For example, your wife may be a quilter and maybe her sewing machines need to be updated or the software that she uses with them is Windows based. And this may be a bit tricky. So the other thing I wanted just to remind you today is that even as Windows 10 does not get any security updates, it is still safe to use in your home as long as you keep it off the internet. Uh, unplug any Ethernet car, um, cables, uh, make sure you don't connect it to your internet, and you can still use that Windows machine, uh, and it will be fine to use even though you won't be getting the security updates. Just make sure you keep it off the internet. Well, it's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Well, you got two choices, an iPad or a Chromebook. Stay away from that nasty Windows stuff. You know what? We make a lot of videos, and if you want to keep updated, you just hit that like and subscribe, and we'll keep you updated as we make new videos at Tech for Senior. Have a great day.